I just want to um <clears throat> I wanted to record a video about the FT the FT817 and I guess also you can include the FT um <clears throat> 818 um with well, the question is if you're going to buy a radio for the first time let's say you've just got your foundation license or you're just returning back to the back to the hobby and you want to spend some money on your first radio do you go for the FT817 or the FT818 <clears throat> and it's it's a, it's a decision that once you make it then you, you that's it you, in many ways you're stuck with that decision for quite a while until you can afford another radio or an upgrade or or change the radio about so it's of course it's not not a decision to be taken lightly for me my first radio was the ft817 and <clears throat> the the reason for that decision is and it's something that you need to consider yourself is that i want i didn't know what uh, what band I wanted to work on. I didn't know whether I was going to be HF, VHF, UHF. So I wanted a radio that gave me the ability to choose amongst all of the HF and, and UHF and VHF bands. So from, um, <clears throat> so so the the eight one seven allowed me to to have that ability, and to also use all the different modes as well as well as data modes. So. It's a versatile radio, fantastic for giving you the experience of working across all of the bands, um, <clears throat> except for four meters, um, but all the, uh, the the main bands and modes that you could wish to um, uh, experience, especially as a, as a newcomer to the hobby. So the radio is a fantastic, um, versatile radio for that. Um, the price of the eight one seven. <clears throat> when I first when I first bought the radio about two years ago, um, it was it was quite expensive at that point uh, for black box with all this magic inside it. Um, the price has gone up since as well. So, um, you know, I think it's about six hundred pounds in the UK. It might be less. I'm not sure. Or it might be a bit more. I, I, I can't. I, I've not checked for quite a while actually. So it's a lot of money. Um, there, there are a number of um, alternate competitive brands out there. Chinese radios, Zigu uh, X108, uh, X. Um, I think it's the. Um, is it five hundred five? Well, I can't remember. But the, um, I can. I may put this into the um, on, on screen in a bit. Um, you can. Get um, an older radio, a reconditioned second-hand radio, uh, the ICOM 706 Mark II. You know, there's a number of radios that can compete uh, against, compete with the uh, A17. Well, for brand new radio, we're probably talking about six hundred pounds. Um, <clears throat> power output up for the A17. Uh, is as we know is only five watts which if you were um if you are a foundation license um you you've only got 10 watts to play with anyway so buying um a radio that has gives you 100 watts uh it does give you the ability to um as you progress through your license like i did is to actually have a radio with more power and then to use that power. So <clears throat> if you buy the 817, it provides enough power for your license anyway. However, um, in a year's time or two years or three years time, when you progress to your um, intermediate license, you, the 817 can feel restrictive. So from a power point of view, it provides enough power for the foundation, but you will at some point be wishing to try out uh, more um, power output. Um, so when you're buying your first radio, you need to think about what will I be wanting to do with the radio in a year's time, in two years time. 
if you're just going, if you are a QRP fan and nothing wrong with that, then maybe you buy the 817 and stick with the 817 and stick with 5 watts, uh, even if you get an intermediate or advanced license or an equivalent in, in the US. But stick with the 817 because it provides the, the right amount of power as well. It's a fantastic QRP radio. Um, as as we've seen on quite a few of my videos, I've used the 817 on HF. I've used it on VHF. <clears throat> I've used it uh, when I'm uh, overnight camping, um, climbing up on the hillsides. Um, when I'm playing radio very lightweight, the 817 fits nicely into the um, sling pack. Uh, with my 817, I have the the wind camp, the wind camp battery, which is perfect um, addition to the radio. It allows me to not have to carry an extra battery. So this um, into a sling pack with a small uh, antenna uh, allows me to um, be very portable. Uh, another thing to consider is, are you happy that it's, um, because it's so compact, um, it's very menu-driven uh, and a very small screen to work on. So uh, it's quite fiddly to work on this. And if you're likely to get frustrated with a small screen, especially if you're going to be using it in, you know, in, as part of your um, home setup rather than just purely portable, then you may struggle with the menu setup. You may, if you're using it at home, I think you can plug it in and use, you can drive that through uh, software as well. So you can get software menus for that. So, but you need to consider the, you know, it's very compact. You know, it's a QRP radio. It isn't going to be anything else. You can get amplifiers, but again, we're talking um, another 150 UK pounds for a um, 40 watt or 50 watt amplifier that you can run the 817. Whereas if if you bought a radio that has the power in that already, but you turn that down because you want to be QRP or because of the license conditions, then maybe buy a radio with more power and then turn it down. But when you buy a bigger radio with more power, you compromise the portability then as well, so it's come. It's a you know it's it's a balance between all of that. So that the that's my thoughts on the eight one seven as the first radio, uh, or some you know some things to consider when you're about to buy your first amateur radio um, transceiver. So. Hope you found that was useful. Um, please drop any uh, uh, comments in, um, share any ideas. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, look forward to uh, talking about more about the different radios that I've been using in the past couple of years. Okay, thank you.